no, that wasn't just a normal explosion, that was a nuclear explosion. And when you saw what happened to these, I mean, I've been to this plant, by the way, in 1988, and it was, it's a monstrous place, and the walls were like incredibly thick, steel reinforced, shielded concrete, I mean, holy mackerel. It was incredibly heavy, heavy duty, and it was just got and what they didn't tell people, but with the people at the Nuclear Regulatory Commission, we know this from documents which have now been released under Freedom of Information, people at NRC knew, I knew the day it happened too, people at NRC knew that rods from the mixed oxide holding pond from number three, that whole holding pond is gone. And when they kept saying, the Japanese government kept saying, and TEPCO kept saying, no, it's still there, it's perfectly intact, here's a film of it, it wasn't number three's holding pond. Because I've been there and the floor is missing. Like the whole floor. You can't have a holding tank where the whole floor is gone. So this and the next few things, these are more recent. This is um, on the 12th of, uh, 11th and 12th of March, reactor grade plutonium. And I, and I could have done this and, and set this up, but we, it, logistically it seemed like it would be a bit complicated to do this. So this is cesium-137. I, now, I get this on my instrument four or five times a day, cesium-137. Now, this is a one and a half inch diameter crystal pointed into my office ambient air, okay? I'm not going and measuring samples or anything like that. I'm just saying it's just like picking up what's in the air. I, had, I was talking to a department head at one of our major universities, a very well-known nuclear physicist, actually, and he says, that's impossible. There's no way that there's so much plutonium and cesium in the air that your little instrument could pick it up in the air. And I said, I'm just reporting what the instrument is telling me. This isn't like something I'm doing, you know? I didn't like exhale cesium-137 of the air, you know? <laughs> Come on, come on, because I enjoy this. <laughs> and there's also cesium-134. And then there's more weapons-grade plutonium. So I'm not here to sell you old technology. I just want you to understand there's a kind of foundation here that goes back through way earlier than us. Nikola Tesla, T. Townsend Brown, who was a friend of mine, and Patrick can tell you, because Patrick was brought into the government program when he was a teenager, the first time I saw our, our next friend who's going to join me up here on stage was in Life magazine in 1960. 62. That's what I thought. It was sitting on my mother's boomerang coffee table. And, and I turned the page and it was Patrick standing on his head. And my mother said, you're never going to be like that. <laughs> no, she forbade me to be a genius. You, you can't be one. They have social problems. <laughs> and it's true. <laughs> and uh, I, I have to also say, with great affection, I wouldn't be here, literally, physically, I wouldn't be alive today if it wasn't for Patrick Flanagan. Because in 1999, I was really, really ill and came to his house with very advanced cancer. And he kindly gave me a bunch of amazing substance that he produced called Mega Hydrate and still produces right here locally. And Mega Hydrate is something that I want Patrick to come up here and talk about along with some other things. If you will join us, Patrick. Patrick Flanagan, yeah. one of the most amazing guys I know <laughs> and one of the dearest friends I have. <laughs> Uh, like Adam said, he, he, you really don't want to tell anybody really bad news unless you can give them some kind of, of um, answer, <laughs> you know, some kind of solution for the bad news, because otherwise it just won't do them very much good, you know. Um, so, uh, mega hydrate is. is um, it is the most powerful antioxidant in the entire universe because it's actually manufactured on the surface of every star and every sun in the universe. It's, it's the manufacture of negative 
hydrogen ions, negatively ionized hydrogen, that uh, causes starlight to be emitted from every sun in the universe. And it turns out that that um, it turns out that that the negative ionized hydrogen is also produced in plants during the process of photosynthesis. And so back in uh, 19, uh, early 1980s, I discovered that uh, fresh plant juices or, or fresh vegetable juices contain negative ionized hydrogen atoms. And, and they're actually created during photosynthesis. So it, for me, the cosmology of it was so mind-blowing because the light coming from the sun is created during the formation of negative ionized hydrogen. That light comes down, hits the leaves of plants. Plants break down water into oxygen and negative ionized hydrogen. And then if you eat the plants, if you eat the fresh fruits and the fresh plant leaves and so forth, that antioxidant goes into your body and enlivens your body and heals your body and so uh, because when I was uh, 17 I was a very sickly child uh, because I was born prematurely and my mother gave me uh, two, two pounds of mercury to play with when I was two years old and, uh, and it, uh, you know she thought it would be a nice toy <laughs> and we, she didn't know, they didn't know back in the early 1940s that um, mercury was so harmful, uh, or harmful. <laughs> they, uh, so anyway, so, so I was always in my life trying to figure out how to uh, heal my body. I had polio when I was nine and different things, you know, challenges, and, uh, and overcame all those things. But the... What happened was was that uh, I noticed because I got into uh, uh, vegan vegetarianism and juicing uh, when I was 17, and I noticed that when I when I consumed freshly made juices, that it enlivened me and and quickened you know it's like a quickening. And then if, if I would let, put the juice in the refrigerator for half an hour or so, uh, the juice was all right, but I didn't get that quickening, you know, that energy boost that I loved so much. And since I was uh, kind of like a child prodigy in the electronics and stuff, I uh, later on decided, to, what is it about vegetables and about the fresh juice that gives you that boost, that quickening versus the older stuff. And it's not enzymes, because the enzymes last quite a while. It was something else. So anyway, discovered negative ionized hydrogen and figured out a way to put it in pills. And I have just put it on the market, basically, uh, not too long before Adam and I met. And and so I gave some to him. And, uh, and it had a miraculous effect on him, as it did on me. Yeah, it was an incredible pain, actually, that day, if you remember correctly, and I looked like yeah. Foster Gamble said something to me that same evening. He said, you look like crap. Oh. And, I said, and I said, yeah, well, I look like I feel, and then you gave me that. And two days later, I was in Oregon, and I looked at the person I was with, and I said, I don't have any pain. I'm not taking anything for pain. I have no pain. And it was, I mean, I was in late fourth stage and it was my left arm and all through my body and I didn't have any pain. And it didn't mean that I was completely healed like in 48 hours, but it was the beginning of adding these extra electrons right. to where the deficit is, where cancer forms, cells, the cells are very sticky. Yeah, in fact, you know, healthy, um, healthy cells uh, uh, use hydrogen. In fact, in, in biochemistry books, in uh, university biochemistry books, they always show protons coming into chemical reactions in the uh, Krebs cycle and things like that. And, and then they show electrons coming in. 
they never tell you, they tell you that the protons came from water, but they never tell you where the electrons came from, the biological electron. And it turns out that, that it's negative ionized hydrogen. Hydrogen carries the electrons in the body to the cells to heal the cells. And, and when we're younger, we have enzymes called dehydrogenase enzymes that, that loosen up hydrogen on carbohydrates, lipids, and proteins and release negative ionized hydrogen, which then becomes NADH, which then goes into the mitochondria and makes ATP, which is the energy surplus of the body. And then the negative ionized hydrogen electrons also go into the DNA for DNA repair. If you don't have them, your DNA, damaged DNA, cannot repair itself. And so, so it's, it, it's a pretty much a real basic key to health. Like the best water in the world, you know, and, and fresh raw juices and raw food are some source of, of H minus ions when you're younger and you have the enzymes, but when you're getting older, your body doesn't make enzymes like it did anymore because the cells change. And so we gotta get some of those electrons from outside the body. Some people, which works very well, uh, walk on, uh, on, uh, on the grass and on ground barefoot, and that's called grounding because Mother Earth provides lots of electrons because uh, she is negatively charged and the ionosphere is positively charged. And so when you walk barefoot on the Earth, you, you get a lot of electrons coming in through the, uh, the soles of the feet and through kidney one, which is the main acupuncture meridian that heals, you know, heals the kidney energy in the body. But, um, and you can ground your bed, but so you can do all of these things, but we have to be aware of it because Wi-Fi and, and atomic uh, uh, nuclides uh, like we're getting from Fukushima. That's the wonderful thing about yeah. negative hydrogen is it produces, it, its electrons are right at the right biological potential. And they, the, the atoms and molecules of our cell just go, oh, give me some of those. And then they don't bond with the nuclides. So this is something that you can do. And I have no percentage in his company. Maybe we should talk about that. <laughs> Somebody, did you raise a hand over here? No? Okay. Um, go ahead. Yeah, so, no, please. so then, then there's other things you can do. Apple pectin, you know, to, uh, it helps pull nuclides out of your body. Uh, it turns out that organic sulfur, otherwise known as methyl sulfonyl methane or MSM, uh, if you take uh, like uh, at least three teaspoons a day, I take, uh, when I'm on it, I take three tablespoons a day of organic sulfur because uh, in the 1950s, the, uh, your, the uh, Department of Agriculture uh, told farmers that they wouldn't give them farming subsidies unless they stopped using natural organic fertilizer that had sulfur and, and told them that they can only use petroleum produced fertilizer which has no sulfur or little sulfur and, and so the sulfur cycle changed and it turns out that MSM organic sulfur uh, it, sulfur uh, uh, happens to form compounds with 144 different elements, 144 different compounds with virtually all the elements on the atomic table except for iodine. And, um, and so when you take organic sulfur in your body, it forms platinum sulfate, plutonium sulfate, um, you know, and uh, iridium sulfate and cesium sulfate and so forth. And sulfates cannot stay in the human body more than 12 hours. And that's why we need to get sulfur every day on our diet, because it, uh, sulfates don't stay. And so what happens is that it's chelating, combining with, with these uh, heavy nuclei and, and uh, sulfating them out of the body. So it's a good way of cleansing and clearing the body. And then we repair the body with negative, uh, you know, with extra electrons, because that's the repair mechanism of DNA and the energy molecules. And, um, and so, 
that's basically a, a, a simple little formula, but there's more. You can wash your, uh, your food. You know, a lot of food coming from California is, uh, is radioactive. We measure our food, all, Adam and I, we measure our food all the time. And, and you pick up some really nice, good-looking vegetables from California, and then you put your Geiger counter on it, and it says, it says iridium-192, cesium-137, and plutonium or whatever. And then you go, well, I think I'll bypass those uh, vegetables. Uh, but then what, what, being a scientist, we figure, we're going to figure out a way to get rid of it. So we, we add MSM to wash water, and we wash the vegetables in the wash water, and we add some baking soda in there, and then you add a little vinegar and a little of that, and, and uh, try, to, try to get rid of it. And on a lot of the vegetables, we can get rid of because the radioactive nuclides are on the surface and not absorbed into it. But when they get into the roots, and then, but you can tell when they get into the roots because the, the fruits uh, and the vegetables start looking really weird, you know, like, yeah, they, they start becoming yeah, monster fruits and vegetables. And uh, so. Like the tuna, too. In, yeah, in oh, Maui. like tuna, yeah. Uh -huh. Like the tuna in Maui, we, we had a friend whose girlfriend was working at one of the major restaurants on Kauai, actually. And she said every time she got a new fish, it was so full of tumors that, you know, it got to be a higher and higher percentage of the fish until she couldn't do it anymore. She couldn't serve sashimi where 50% of the fish had to be rejected because it was full of tumors. You know, tumors. And this is not just ahi, it's also mahi-mahi, et cetera, et cetera. We used to live in Hawaii, both of us. And um, we loved it. I mean, you know, it, it's, it's not like we rejected it because it sucked. <laughs> it was a great place to be. Um, JJ actually, two, I think a year before Fukushima happened, or two years, he said, you might want to be leaving here pretty soon. And I said, well, but it's so great. And he said, he says, well, I have good information that something may be happening that may make it not so great here anymore. <laughs> and it was like, we really dragged our heels about it, but we got out of there, didn't we? Yeah, we were, we were starting to glow a little bit in the dark, but not too bad. <laughs>